between the Testaments, approximately 400 years. Persian period, 430 BC to 332 BC. At close of the Old Testament, about 430 BC, Judea was a Persian providence. Persia had been a world power for about a hundred years. It remained so for another hundred years, during which the period not much is known of Jewish history. Persian rule was the, for the most part mild and tolerant. The Persian Empire As a policy of the Assyrian and Babylonian kings, it had been to deport conquered peoples, that is, taking them away from their own lands and scatter them to other lands. So the policy of the Persian kings was exactly the opposite, was to reprobate those peoples that was send them back to their own lands. Persian kings were more humane than Assyrian and Babylonian kings. One of the first acts of the first Persian king, Cyrus, was a singularly noble and just monarch. In his first year was to authorize the return of the Jews to their own land. Persia was the mountainous plateau east of the lower end of the Irati Euphrates and Tigris Valley. The Persian Empire was vaster and extent than its predecessors had been, extending eastward to India and reaching westward to Greece. Its capitals were Persinopolis and Susa. Its king sometimes residing at Babylon. As a world power, it lasted 200 years roughly from 536 BC to 331 BC. Its kings were Cyrus, conquered Babylon, made Persia a word, world empire, permitted the Jews to return to their homeland in fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy, Cambyas 529, BC to 522 BC. He is thought to have been Artaxerxes, mentioned in Isa, Ezra chapter 4, verse 7, 11, and 23, who stopped work on the temple. Diarus the first, High Stapas, from 521 BC to 485 BC. Authorized completion of the temple, as written in Ezra chapter 6. Made the Behastern inscription. Exorus Ahurus, 485 to 565 BC. Famous for wars with Greece, Esther was his wife. More Mordecai, his prime minister, Artaxerxes the first, Long in Manus, from 465 to 425 BC, very favorable to the Jews, authorized Nehemiah, his cupbearer, to rebuild Jerusalem. Exorus the second, Dyrus the second. Artechorus the second, Artechorus the third, and Arsus Darius the third. He was defeated by Alexander the Great in 331 BC at the famous Battle of Arbella near the site of Nineveh. This was the fall of the Persian and the rise of the Greece empire passed from Asia to Europe. Greek period 331 BC to 167 BC. Up to this time, the great powers of the world had been in Asia and Africa. 
but looming ominously on the western horizon was the rising power of Greece. The beginnings of Greece history bell in myth. It is thought that it had been commenced about the 12th century BC, the time of the biblical judges. Then came the Trojan War and Homer about 1000 BC, the age of David and Solomon. The beginning of authentic Greek history is usually been reckoned from the first Olympiad, 776 BC. Then came the formation of the Hellenic states, 700 to 76 to 500 BC. Then the Persian Wars from 500 BC to 331 BC. And the famous battles, Mathron 490 BC to Them Morali and Salamis 480 BC. Then the brilliant area of the Persecals, 465 BC to 429 BC, and the Secortax, 469 BC to 339 BC. Contemporaries of Ezra and Nehemiah. Alexander the Great, 336 BC. At the age of 20, assumed the command of the Greek army and, like a meteor, swept eastward over the lands that had been under the dominion of Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, and Persia. By 331 BC, the whole world lay at his feet. On his invasion of Palestine in 332 BC, he showed great consideration to the Jews, spared Jerusalem, and offered immunities to the Jews to settle in Alexandria. He established Greek cities all over his conquered domains, and along with them Greek culture and Greek language. After a brief reign, he died in 323 BC. On Alexander's death, his empire fell to four of his generals, the two eastern sections going to Syria, of Syria going to Selic Eucus, Egypt going to Tampe, Palestine, lying between Syria and Egypt, went first to Syria, but then shortly passed to Egypt in 301 BC and remained in the control of Egypt until 198 BC. Under the great kings of Egypt, called the Temmolis, the condition of Jews were mainly peaceful and happy. Those that were in Egypt built synagogues in all their settlements. Alexandria became an influential center of Judaism. Antichus the Great reconquered Palestine in 198 BC and in the back of to the kings of Syria called Seleucides. Antichus Amphanes in 175 BC to 164 BC was violently bitter against the Jews, and he made a furious and determined effort to exterminate them and their religion. He devastated Jerusalem in 168 BC, defiled the temple, and offered a show on its altar, erected the altar of Jupiter, and prohibited temple worship, forbade circumcision to the pain of death, sold thousands of the Jews' families into slavery, destroyed all copies of scriptures that could be found, and slaughtered everyone discovered in possession of such copies, and resorted to every conceivable torture to force Jews to renounce their religion. This led to the Maccabean Revolt, one of the most heroic feats in history. 
The Ptolemies, Greek kings of Egypt, were Pompey the First, Pompey the Second, Pompey the Third, Pompey the Fourth, Pompey the Fifth, Pompey the Sixth, and Pompey the Seventh. Ranging from years 323 BC to 117 BC. The Seleucids, Greek kings of Syria, were Seleucus, Nictar, Antiochus I, Antiochus II, Seleucus II, Seleucus III, Antiochus III, Seleucus IV, Antiochus IV, Ephesians, Antiochus V, Alexander Bales, Antiochus VI, and Typhon and Antiochus the seventh. This ranged in time frame from 312 BC to 130 BC. Period of Independence 167 BC to 63 BC. Also called the Maccabean or Asmonean and Hasmonean period. Mantheus, a priest of intense patriotism and unbound courage, infiltrated at the attempt of the Antiochus Ephesians to destroy the Jews and their religions, gathered a band of loyal Jews, and raised a standard of revolt. He had five heroic and warlike sons, Judas, Jonathan, Simon, John and Eleazar. Manthinus died in 166 BC. His mantle fell onto his son Judas, a warrior of amazing military genius. He won a battle after against unbelievable and impossible odds. He reconquered Jerusalem in 165 BC and purified and rededicated the temple. This was the origin of the Feast of Dedication. Judas united the priestly and civil authority in himself and thus established a line of Asmosian priests, rulers from the following 100 years, governed an independent Judea. They were Mantheas, Judas, Jonathan, Simon, John Hyrcanus. Son of Jonathan, Artemis Bales, and his sons, unworthy of the Macadamian name. This time frame was from 167 BC to 106 BC. Roman period, 63 BC to time of Christ. In the year of 63 BC, Palestine was conquered by the Romans under Pompey, Antikopatar, and Induman, Edomite, descendant of Isu, was appointed ruler of Judea. He was succeeded by his son Herod the Great, who was king of Judea, 37 BC to 3 BC. Herod, to obtain favor of the Jews, rebuilt the temple with great splendor, but he was brutal and cruel man. This is the Herod who ruled Judea when Jesus was born, and he, it was he who slew the children of Bethlehem. The Old Testament Cana The word Cana literally means Cain or measuring rod came to be used as the name of the list of books which were recognized as genuine, originally inspired, and authorized word of God, the rule of faith. Early history God began the formation of the book which was to be the medium of his revelation of himself to men. Ten Commandments written in stone, Deuteronomy chapter 10 verses 4 and 5, Moses' law written in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verses 24 to 26. 
And copies of this book were made in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 18. Joshua added to the book in Joshua chapter 24, verse 26. Samuel wrote in a book and laid it upon, laid it up for God. In 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 25. This book was well known 400 years later in 2 Kings chapter 22, verses 8 through 20. Prophets wrote in the book of Jeremiah chapter 36 through 32. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 4 chapter 7 verses 7 through 12. Ezra read this book for, of God publicly in Ezra chapter 7 verse 6 and Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 5. In the days of Jesus this book was called the scriptures and was taught regularly and read publicly in synagogues. It was commonly regarded among the people as the Word of God. Jesus himself called it the Word of God. The New Testament, there are about 300 quotations of these scriptures, and no book outside of these scriptures is thus quoted in the New Testament, with a singular exception of the words of Enoch in the book of Jude. Many of these quotations are the Subtuagent version of the Old Testament, which was common use in the New Testament times, and even through though the Subtuagent contained the Apocrypha books, there is not one quotation of the Apocrypha books. This is evidence that neither Jesus nor the Apostles recognized the Apocrypha books as part of the Scriptures. These scriptures were comprised of 39 books which con constituted their own t Old Testament, though under different arrangement. They were spoken of as the Law, 5 books, the Prophet, 8 books, and the Writings, 11 books. Thus, the Law books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The prophet books, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the Twelve Minor Prophets. The Writings, Psalms, Proverbs, Job, Song, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Chronicles. Thus combining the two books, each of Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles into one, and Ezra and Nehemiah into one, and the twelve minor prophets, which were written on one scroll into one. These twenty-four books are exactly the same as the thirty-nine books of the Old Testament. Just when this group of books were completed and set, ap and set apart and definitively recognized as the Word of God is involved in obscurity, the Jews' tradition was that it was done by Ezra, who believed that as these books were written, beginning with Moses, they were, at the time, recognized and inspired of God. A place in the tabernacle or temple, along with the accumulating group of sacred writings, copies were made as needed. In Babylonian captivity, they were scattered and many copies destroyed. Ezra, after return from captivity, reassembled scattered copies and restored them as a complete group to their place in the temple. From temple copies, other copies were made for synagogues. Josephus considers the Old Testament canon as fixed from the days of Antichrist time in Ezra. Here are his words. We have but 22 books containing the history of all time, books that are believed to be divine. Of these five belong to Moses, containing his laws and the traditions of origin of mankind down to the time of his death. From the death of Moses to the reign of Acturus, the prophets who succeeded Moses wrote the history of the events that occurred in their own time in 13 books. The remaining four books comprise hymns to God and precepts for the conduct of human life. 
From the days of Antichrist, there are on times every event that has indeed been recorded, but these recent records have not been deemed worthy of equal credit with those that preceded them on the account of failure to exact succession of the prophets. There is practical proof of the spirit in which they treat the scriptures. For although so great an interval of time has now passed, not a soul has ventured to add or to remove or alter syllable. And it is an instinct of every Jew from day of his birth to consider these scriptures as the teachings of God and to abide by them, if need be, cheerfully and lay down his life in their behalf. This testimony is of no small value. Josephus was born in A.D. 37 in Jerusalem of priestly aristocracy. He received an extensive education in Jewish and Greek culture and was governor of Galilee and military commander in the wars with Rome and was present at the destruction of Jerusalem. These words of Jerusalem are unquestionable testimony to the belief of the Jewish nation of Jesus' day as to what books comprised the Hebrew scriptures and that that was collected of the books had been completed and fixed for 400 years preceding his time. As to the 22 books of Josephus, see page 26. The Books of Josephus' Time 17 historical books, 5 poetic books, 17 prophetic books, Old Testament, New Testament, 4 Gospels, Acts, 21 Epistles, Revelations, Historical, Rise and Falls of the Hebrew Nation, Poetic, Literature of Nations, Golden Age, Prophetic, Literature of Nations, Dark Days. Gospels, The Man Whom the Nation Produce. Acts, His Reign Among All Nations Begins. Epistles, His Teachings and Principles. Revelations, Forecasts of His Universal Dominion. The Hebrew Old Testament contains exactly the same books as our English Old Testament, but in different arrangement. The Law five books genesis exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy prophets four earlier joshua judges samuel kings eight books writings 11 books later isaiah jeremiah ezekiel the 12 prophets three prophetic psalms proverbs joel five rules Songs, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastics, Esther, three books, Daniel, Ezra, Nehemiah, Chronicles. By combining two books each of Samuel, Kings and Chronicles into one, Ezra and Nehemiah into one, the twelve minor prophets into one, these twenty-four books are the same as our thirty-nine. Josephus further reduces the number to twenty-two to make it considered two Hebrew alphabet by combining Ruth with Judges and Lamentations with Jeremiah. The five worlds were ready to read yearly at feasts, song at Passover, allegorical referring to Exodus, Ruth at Pentecost celebrating harvest, Esther's at Purim commemorating deliverance from Haman, Ecclesiastics at Tabernacles, Most Joyful of Feasts, and Lamentations, Ninth of Ab, Commemorating Destruction of Jerusalem. The Septuagint's translations reclassified the Old Testament books according to the subject matter. English translators followed the Septuagint order as we now have them. 
17 historical books of the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Poet poetical books, 5. Joel, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Songs. 17 prophetic books. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosanna, Joel, Amos, Obedirai, Jonah, Men, Minach, Neham, Habatuka, Zephariah, Haggiah, Zechariah, Malachi. The 27 New Testament books, four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts, 21 Epistles, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philippon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, Revelations. 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, and June. As to the arrangement, the Septuagint translator reclassified them according to the subject matter, which reclassification has been followed by Latin and English translators. The books of our Old Testament, though in different order, are identical with the books of the Hebrew Scriptures. They were not called the Old Testament till after the completion of the Christian Scriptures to different, differentiate the two. Apocalypse. <clears throat> This is the name usually given to the 14 books contained in some Bibles between the Old and New Testament. They originated in the 1st to 2nd centuries BC, mostly of uncertain authorship and were added to the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Old Testament made in that period. They were not in Hebrew Old Testament. They were written after Old Testament prophecy oracles and directed revelation had ceased. Josephus rejected them as a whole. They were never recognized by the Jews as part of the Hebrew scriptures. They were never quoted by Jesus nor anywhere in the New Testament. They were not recognized by the early church as a canonical authority nor as a divine inspiration. When the Bible was translated into Latin in the 2nd AD, its Old Testament was translated not from the Hebrew Old Testament, but from the Greek Septuagint version of the Old Testament. From the Septuagint, these apocryphal books were carried over into the Latin translation and from thence into the Latin Vulgate which became the common version in Western Europe till the time of the Reformation. Protestants basing their movement on the divine authority of God's word at once rejected these apocryphal books as being no part of God's word as the early church and ancient Hebrews had done. Then the Roman Catholic Church with the Council of Trent in 546 AD, which was held to stop the Protestant movement, declared these books to be canonical and they are still in the Diova version Roman Catholic Bible. These apocryphal books are as follows. First, Edress. Edress is a Greek form of Ezra. This book is a compilation of passages from Ezra, 2 Chronicles, and Nehemiah with added legends about Zerubbabel, 
Its object was to picture the liberty of Cyprus and Diaprus toward the Jews as a pattern for the Timalis. Second Ezra, sometimes called Fourth Ezra, it perpetuates the contained the version of the Ezra dealing with God's government of the world and coming new age and the restoration of certain lost scriptures. Talbot, a romance entirely devoid of historical value of rich young Israelite captive in Nineveh, who was led by an angel to wed a virgin widow who had lost seven husbands. Judith, an historical romance of which a beautiful and devout Jewish widow who in the days of Babylon invasion of Judah and derivedly went to the tent of Babylon general and under guise of offering herself to him, cut off his head and thus saved her city. Rest of Esther Interpolated passages of the Septuagint version of the Old Testament book of Esther mainly to show the hand of God in the story. These fragments were gathered and grouped together by Jerome. Wisdom of Solomon Very similar to parts of Job, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes, a source of fusion of Hebrew thought and Greek philosophy written by an Alexandrian Jew who impersonates himself as Solomon. Ecclesiastes, also called the Wisdom of Jesus, the son of Sirach. Resembling the book of Proverbs, which is written widely by a Travis Jewish philosopher, gives rules for the conduct in all details of civilian, religious, and domestic life. Exalts a long list of Old Testament Hebrews. Barak. This book purports to come from Barak, the scribe of Jeremiah who is represented as spending his last portion of his life in Babylon. It is addressed to the exiles. It consists mostly of paraphrases from Jeremiah, Daniel, and other prophets. The Song of Three Holy Children An unauthenticated addition to the book of Daniel inserted after chapter 3 verse 23 portraying to give their prayer while in the fiery furnace and their trivenical song of praise for deliverance. History of Susan, another unauthenticated amplification of a book of Daniel relating to how a godly wife of a wealthy Jew in Babylon falsely accused of adultery was cleared by the wisdom of Daniel. Bell and the Dragon, another unauthenticated edition of the book of Daniel two stories in both in which Daniel proves that the idols of Baal and the dragon are not gods, one of which is based in the story of the lion's den. Prayer of Manansa Purports to the prayer of Manansa, king of Judah, when he was held captive in Babylon, which is spoken of in Second Chronicles chapter 33 verse 12 through 13. Author unknown, date probably first century. 1st Maccabees, an historical work of the great value of the Maccabean period relating events of the Jews' heroic struggle uh, for liberty in 175 BC to 335 BC, written about 100 BC by a Palestinian Jew. 2nd Maccabees, this is also an account of the Maccabean struggle confiding confining itself in a period of 175 BC to 161 BC. It professes to be an abridgment of a work written by a certain Jason of Syrian, of whom nothing is known. Supplements first Maccabees, but is inferior to it. Other Writings 
Besides the Apocrypha described on the preceding two pages, these were other Jewish writings originated in the period between the 2nd century BC and 1st century AD, much of which was apocalyptic in nature, in which the writer assumed the name of a hero long since dead and rewrote the history in terms of prophecy. These are, they are composed quite largely of visions perpetrating to come from ancient past personage of scriptures, some of them containing the wildest of fantasies. They are occupied in considerable extent with the coming Messiah. The suffering of the Maccabean period intensified in Jewish expectation that the time was drawing near. Based partly on the uncertain traditions and partly on imagination. Some of the better known are Books of Enoch, a group of fragments or versions on known authorship written in the 1st and 2nd centuries containing the revelations reproof that have been given to Enoch and Noah. They speak of the coming Messiah and the Day of Judgment. See further under Jude 14. Assumptions of Moses, written by a Pharisee about the time of the birth of Christ, contains prophecies attributed to Moses when he was about to die, which he entrusted to Joshua. Ascension of Isaiah, relating to a legendary account of the martyrdom of Isaiah and certain of his propated vision thought to have been written in Rome by a Christian Jew during the Neoranian persecution of the Jews. Book of Jubilees, a commentary on Genesis written probably by a Macadamian period or later, named from its system of the time reckoning based on the Jubilee periods of 50 years. Psalms of Solomon, a group of songs by an unknown Pharisee of the coming Messiah, written probably soon after the Maccabean period. Testament of Twelve Parchments, a product of the second century, pro perpetrating to give the dying instruction of the twelve sons of Jacob to their children, each reporting the story of his own life and its lessons. Zebelin oracles written in Maccabean times with other additions in, in imitation of Greek and Roman oracles dealing with the downfall of oppressing empires and the dawn of Masonic age. The Septuagint. This was a translation of the Hebrew Testament into Greek. It was made in Alexandria. There were many Greek-speaking Jews. Tradition has it that the request of Pompeius Philithios, who lived in 285 BC to 447 BC, 70 Jews, skillfully linguists, were sent from Jerusalem to Egypt. The patriarch was first translated. Later, the rest of the Old Testament books were added to the translation. It was called the Septuagint from the 70 translators who were recruited to have begun it. Greek was the language of the world at the time. This version was in common use in the days of Christ. The New Testament was written in Greek. Many of the quotations of the Old Testament are from the Septuagint. The text of the Old Testament. It is believed that the Old Testament books were written originally on skins. They were copied by hand. Hebrew was in square characters from right to left with some dots or symbols variously attached four vowels. A vowel system was not introduced till the 6th century AD. Though copied with the greatest care, it was easily productive 
of various readings until the captivity official copies were kept in the temple. Afterward, many copies were made for synagogues. Apparently, in some cases, marginal notes made by the copyists were, by later copyists, incorporated into the body of the text. The invitation of printing removed danger of errors in the text, and now as a result, the work of scholars are comparing the various manuscripts. There is a recognized Hebrew text known as the Masoret. Aramaic language. This was the common language of the Palestine in Jesus' day. After the return of Babylonian captivity, it had been gradually displaced Hebrew as the ordinary speech of the people. It was the ancient language of Syria, very similar to Hebrew. The Targums. These are translations of the Hebrew Old Testament books into Aramaic, original translations, oral translations, paraphrases, and interpretations reduced to writings. These became necessary as use of Aramaic became prevalent in Palestine. The Talmud, a collection of various Jewish tradition and oral explanations of the Old Testament, Old Testament which were committed to writings in the second century AD with later commentary thereon. The Great Synagogue. This is the name of the council consisting of 120 members said to have been organized by Nehemiah about 410 BC under the presidency of Ezra for the purpose of reconstructing the religious life of the return of the captives. It is thought to have been continuing body governing the returned Jews till 275 BC. It is said to have had an important part in the gathering, grouping, and restoring of the canonical books of the Old Testament. The Sanhedrin The recognized headship of the Jewish people in the days of Christ. It is thought to have originated in the 3rd century BC. It was composed of 70 members, mostly priests and Sadducean nobles, some Pharisees, scribes and elders, tribal or family heads, presided over by a high priest. Synagogues. Synagogues arose in the days of captivity. The temple destroyed and the nation scattered, there was a need for places of instruction and worship wherever there were Jewish communities. At the return of synagogues were contained both in the homeland and the Jewish centers in other lands. All larger towns had one or more. In Jerusalem, even though the temple was there, there were many synagogues. They were presided over by a board of elders or rulers. Early Christian meetings were modeled in part after the pattern of synagogues. The Dispersion. This is the name of the Jews living among Palestine. Very mainly of them choose to remain in the lands of captivity in the intertestament periods, Jews outside Palestine came to be for more numerous than those in Palestine. There grew to be strong colonies of Jews in every land in all the chief cities of the civilized world. Babylon, Assyria, Syria, Philistina, Asia Minor, Greece, Egypt, North Africa, and Rome. The three main divisions of the dispersion were Babylonians, Syrian, and Egyptian. In the time of Christ, a number of the Jews in Egypt was estimated at a million, and there were strong populations in Damascus and Antioch. So in the providence of 
God, captivities turned out to be for the benefit of the nations among whom they were scattered. They influenced the thought of the nations and also were influenced by the thought of the nations. Pharisees. A section of the Pharisees is thought to have been originated in the 3rd BC century, in the days preceding the Maccab Maccabean Wars under the Greek domination and the Greek effort of Hellenize the Jews. There was a strong tendency among the Jews to accept the Greek culture with its pagan religious customs. The rise of the Pharisees was a reaction and protest against its tendencies amongst their fellow countrymen. Their aim was to preserve their national integrity and strict conform conformity of Masonic law. They later developed into self-righteous and hypocritical formalists. See Matthew chapter 23. The Sadducees the Sadducees as a sect are thought to have been originated by the same time as the Pharisees. Being guided by secular considerations, they were in favor of adopting Greek customs. They took no part in Maccabean, Maccabean struggles for their nation's liberty. They were a priestly clique, and though they were the religious officials of their nation, they were avowedly irreligious. They were not numerous, but were wealthy and influential. To a great extent, they controlled the San Juhiran. Even though they were rationalist and worldly minded. Hmm. Scribes. Scribes were copyists of the scriptures. It was a calling of very early origin. Their business was to study and interpret as well as copy the scriptures. Because of their minute acquaintance with law, they were also called lawyers and were recognized authorities. The decision of leading scribes became oral law or tradition. They were quite numerous in Maccabean period and became very influential among the people. A vocation of great importance before the days of printing. Preparation for Christ The Old Testament is the story of God's dealing with the Hebrew nation for the purpose of bringing into the world a Messiah for all nations. The Old Testament is a sort of peon of the coming messiah starting with low scattered notes it expands as time passes with enlarging consendor consendo into clear loud trumpet tones of the approaching king meantime god in his providence is making ready the nations greek united the civilizations of Egypt, Greek united the civilizations of Asia, Europe, and Africa, and established one universal language. Rome made one empire of the whole world. Rome roads made all parts of it accessible. The dispersation of the Jews among the nations thus paved the way for the prop of the gospel of Christ in their synagogues and their scriptures.